to you um, as far as the whistleblowing aspect, because you talked about like what prompted you to whistleblow, but, but what happened as the backlash? What happened then after? Like, what are you dealing with now? Well, I'm, and I'm still learning what, like what some of the consequences are and, and how they even came to those decisions. Um, but essentially on October 27th, I went to my Congresswoman, that was fine. And it actually coincided um, with President Biden's uh, executive order, which was 14043, which said that uh, all federal employees had to go get these COVID shots, which I wasn't going to go do because I already had COVID and I was good with it. It's like, and also I have some pretty strong pro-life beliefs about not doing that. Um, just the development of it seemed very suspicious. And it's like, I can sit this one out. Um, I've been a medical prep professional for a long time. You know, I, I do fitness tests on a regular basis. I maintain my, you know, sort of my own health. And, uh, and I've been a paramedic for a decade and it's like, I have a little bit of understanding of medicine and I just don't want this. Like I should be able to have that choice. So, right. um, so I, these things happen simultaneously for me. I mean, within like a couple of weeks and yeah. if anybody knows anything about the government, the government doesn't move quickly. Um, it slowly like steamrolls towards you and then tries to screw you over. And, and so, you know, what the motivation was, is really difficult to say. It's like, was it because I said no to COVID? Was it because of the whistleblower thing? Um, I'm going to hazard the guess that the different, because there was another gentleman in my squad. My squad only had eight agents on it. He was also unvaccinated. He also refused to test for COVID at some point. He just stopped doing it. So on a day when he and I were both in the same place doing the same activity and had not tested for COVID, which was part of their policy that they made up out of thin air. Um, the only difference between the two of us is that I was a federal whistleblower and had brought this email forward. And he still works for the FBI. He still has a paycheck. As far as I know, he doesn't have any troubles with them. I was removed from my pay that day, the same day that he and I were out on the, in an outdoor area uh, working together, doing a training. Wow. So for me, that cinches the, you know, it's like, what's, what's the difference between these two animals? Uh, right. One of them's a whistleblower. So for me, that's what it is. And what do they do? You know, they pulled my paycheck. They suspended my security clearance. They have, um, I would say, impugned my honor by saying that I was unprofessional with the police officer, which has never happened. Um, I don't think I've ever been unprofessional with a cop. And what's fun is, is that people, you know, you're on rumble right now. They can literally go onto my rumble channel and watch the three and a half minute interaction and make their own decision. I will suggest to them that they will not be impressed and that it was not very interesting at all. It was a very benign, you know, two guys in the desert. So, so that's, yeah, that's kind of the, the consequences. And we sold our house, you know, and we did a bunch of other kind of wild stuff. Cause when you have no income, you got to make some decisions which I'm, I'm so sure you know a little bit about. Yeah. And I know you have children too. So this has really been, I mean, it's been, it's shaken up your whole family, I would imagine. Um, yeah. My wife, I mean, she, I, she wouldn't like me saying it necessarily, but you know, she cries at night sometimes. Cause it's like, how are we going to get back to normal? I think that we're on that track right now, but at the same time, never once has she said, why did you do this? And that's what I'm so lucky because, you know, having a spouse that, you know, supports what you're into and knows it's like, we're going to do the right thing. Family it's going to be awful. Your family. What's that? Also your family also is behind it too. They, they support you. Yeah. So my mother and my father, um, yeah. So I've got four siblings. Uh, I got five siblings. I got five siblings and I'm pretty confident none of them would support what I'm into. They don't really get it. Oh, okay. Um, but my folks do. And so that's helpful. Um, that I think my in-laws are kind of concerned. They don't really get it either. <laughs> well, you know, I went through that when I came forward about Biden, um, there were cousins that knew what happened to me and actually won't speak to me because of sure. people. And, um, yeah, I mean, you, well, and also you're going after their guy. Yeah. You know, and that's the thing. And, um, but it's weird that somebody that knew you from childhood and has that bond familial bond, and even knows what happened when it happened would still mm -hmm. stand by a political candidate that they'll never meet that probably, well, I mean, I think don't get it. Yeah. No, it, it walks us right up to where, where we're at right now in this country, which is this tribalism, right? I mean, we've just kind of entered a dimension and I don't remember it from being a kid. I don't remember anybody caring about politics when I was a kid. Like no. it just didn't happen. Like, it's not that they didn't care. They just didn't talk about it. And it wasn't like a, like a, it wasn't grocery store line conversation. It wasn't a breaking point in relationships either. Mm -hmm. right? I remember reading a survey that said something to the effect of um, in the 1960s that a parent would like, you know, swear off or um, what is the word I'm looking for? They would, um, disavow their child for marrying somebody of the other race. And now it's about political parties. It's the same sort of weird, stupid bigotry. Uh, yeah. And I, I just, you know, it's stupid. It's, it's sad.